Welcome everybody to the Courtyard Studios Magazine Show, Episode 2. My name's Josh Fox and this is my co-presenter Tim Gill. In this episode we'll be bringing to you an exciting lineup of musicians that have been playing at the Courtyard for the last few months. A performance by blues extraordinaire, Adia Victoria, and we'll also be talking and listening to Sophie Doyle Ryder, who flew over from Dublin for a special session. First up on the show is Dylan Comrique, a force to be reckoned with, an actor, a musician who seamlessly blends the energy of both and has made herself a rising star. Dylan performs an intimate version of her hit, Birthday Cake, but before she sits down and talks about her newest releases and what's to come. I'm sitting with Dylan Conrick, who's going to be playing for us tonight. Dylan, hi. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Are uh, you looking forward to the set tonight? I am, yeah. I mean, it's the last show, which is sad, but I'm excited because, first of all, we have these cool lights and it's a cool venue, so overall, yeah. How are the, the uh, North America shows? All, all great. I mean, they're all sold out, which is crazy. It's my first show, so. Do you notice uh, a difference between the, the fans in the U.S. and the fans here in, in the U.K.? Everyone's super hype and, like, I mean, from the show last night, everyone like was singing all of my songs, which was crazy. It was like, I didn't even have to sing some of the parts. I just let them sing because it, it sounded so cool. But what about uh, influence for yourself when you get home, you know, bath, shower, long day? Who do you yeah. put on your own playlist? I'm a big country fan. Right. So I play a lot of country, like Hot Country on Spotify. And, um, you know, it's kind of mixed with like Luke Combs and Thomas Brett, Roscoe Flats, and a bunch of all those other people, so. Is yeah. that the same? set of artists that influence you as an artist? Uh, are there any, in terms of your songwriting, is there any particular, somebody that's very influential on your style? Yeah, I think so. I think when it comes to storytelling, I, I think because of all the years I've been listening to country music, you know, I've been listening to it for like, I mean, years, years since I was a kid. And so now that I'm writing songs, I'm, um, you know, I can see myself kind of writing a little bit of stories sometimes. You've got an acting background. You've got a lot of experience in that. You've been doing that since you were 12, 13 years old. Yeah. So do you, do you call on any of that experience to help you with your onstage performance? Before I did, before I'd be honest, I think like I faked a lot of emotions, but this, you know, this show's different and the music's different that I actually like, I relate to everything. Right. In, a, in this moment, and yep. you know, naturally when that song plays, I'm just like connected to it, and I see that the crowd is so connected to it, which also helps me. And um, you know, overall, like I found a much more connection with these recent songs. Right. Now. Yeah. Um, you've got a new song coming out called Ugly. Mm -hmm. um, September release, is that right? Yeah, around that time. We haven't found a release date quite soon, but um, I'm really excited for this one. I mean, I got to work with like the most amazing producers and writers for this song. So overall, um, I'm glad I finally am finding my sound. And I think that this is like, this is the next kind of... Um, step. It's next step for me. Yeah, for sure. 400,000 YouTube subscribers, is that? Yeah. So that's quite a lot, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you think about it, 400,000 people, imagine yeah. that in a room, that's a lot of people. The, the, the BBC only has 12 million, to put that in context, and they've been running for quite a while. <laughs> so I'd say you're doing pretty well with that. <laughs> um, what about plans for releasing, you know, an EP or a full album? Is there anything in the works, Pipeline? Nothing right now. I'm kind of just taking it day by day, you know, going in the studio, and... Because at the same time, I've always f felt like... I've come out with a song that's like, oh, that's my next song. Or I've, you know, I've always, it's natural to come out with a song, with a song from a session and be like, that wasn't my best. Mm. But, you know, you just take it step by step. And overall, um, right now I'm just doing singles, probably an album or an EP in the future, but not right now. Do you enjoy the recording process, studio time? Yeah, I mean, I, I work with like the most fun people ever. Right. So it feels like, just natural and I can mess up in front of them and I can just, you know, be myself in front of them. So overall, it's really fun. When you're writing, do you use an instrument, a piano, a guitar to play? Is it melodies? Um, I don't play any instruments in the studio, but I do have, um, you know, a producer who plays like literally every instrument. He's insanely talented. I'm just like, observe him, like, how do you do that? Um, but yeah, it's really fun um, getting to like collab. It feels very like, 
you know, very uh, both sided, and we yeah. we have our opinions, and we tell each other. We're not afraid to tell each other. So, um, yeah, I just um, you know, I just come up with melodies. I'm, I'm a melody person too. I right. love melodies and then lyrics after. So, Dylan, you're performing tonight. It's the fourth gig out of the tour. Yes. You're going to head back to the US afterwards. Well, what's next for you? What's next is um, going back in the studio, and then September 22nd is my first show. I'm opening up for Mimi Webb Great. on the American tour. So oh, wow. September 22nd through October 13th. But Dylan, the fans are uh, ready to go outside. We can hear them uh, gathering at the door. You've got uh, a big show to do tonight. Yes, I'm Thanks excited. for talking to us. Um, of course. Best of luck with everything in the future. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. It's been an exciting time over the last six months and we've been full force back into the gigs and performances with artists travelling from all over the world to show us what we've been missing. 
the nights of bouncing off the wall and dancing are back, and theatre audiences have been gripped by original raw performance. Since we launched the channel with the release of the magazine show, we've had weekly releases of live music, interviews and performances. It's an exciting time as we see more people prepared to embrace a different set of genres that perhaps weren't as readily available as before. We're really grateful to all our viewers and our subscribers who have joined us to support their favourite bands and to find out about some new music. Now we move on to our next guest, Sophie Doyle Ryder, who's come all the way from Dublin to give us an intimate performance session of one of the hottest tracks of the year. Rolled out of bed, whose clothes do I have on? A tie-dye t-shirt, I want a party, would you put something on? Thanks for being here with us. Thank you so much for having me. So, Sophie, you've come over from Ireland to join us uh, for today's session. Uh, when was the last time you were in London? Um, I was last here in April, end of April, um, to do a gig for the Notting Hill Arts Club. Um, it was super fun to do that. But before that, I wasn't here for a long, long time. And I obviously love coming here. Um, I came here to do my first, like when I wrote my first few songs, like Mood and Too Much and all them, I did them here. So like, it's just kind of a special place for me musically. Now Lauren, she's your manager, but she's also a songwriting partner of yours. Yes. How long have you guys been working together? Um, Lauren originally started out as my vocal trainer when I was 10, 11, right. very young. Um, so she's been a huge like motivation and inspiration for me. Like musically, she's always like pushed me to do um, this. So uh, she's just a huge, role model in my life like I feel like I'd be lost without like I wouldn't be doing this now without Lauren like you know so when you're working uh on developing a new piece of music is that are you very much in the lyric side of it the music side of it or is it depending on the track so yeah I'm more of a lyrics type person especially with Lauren as well I think sometimes we read each other's minds like and just say the same lyrics and it's insane but definitely lyrics girl 
Actually, here's another question I had for you was, if you could pick a festival to play at, which would it be? Definitely that. We've covered that then. Yeah. It definitely well, it's Malahide. Not, it's not a festival. It's more like they hold like concerts and stuff. Like Dermot Kennedy did a great one a few weeks ago. It was incredible. Um, and when do they have that? When? They usually do it in the, in the first few weeks of June, July. Um, they have like, I think Sheik did one in the castle. Who else? Um, the Killers obviously did loads. They're great, like, and you can you don't have to buy a ticket. Like, you can go up to the castle and sit there, and you can hear everything perfectly. So it's really. And it would obviously be a warm-up gig for you doing pyramid stage at Glastonbury. Yes. Headlining. Of course. Of course. Nice timing. Very good of them to work around you. In terms of other artists, um, you know, let's say you get home at the end of a long day, um, who's on your playlist? Um, Phoebe Bridges, definitely. I love her. Um, Remy Wolf is an idol of mine. I think she's so. She's so eccentric and like her lyrics are just incredible. They're so, they make no sense, but they make so much sense at the same time kind of vibe. Um, Benny is one of my favorites. She's from New Zealand. She's incredible. Uh, Amanda May as well. She's, she's played a big part like in my career, even her songs with like Johnny Got a Boom Boom and Big Brown Handsome Man and all. They were like really songs that I listen to every day with my mom. So like, it, I think it kind of inspired me to kind of be like, super strong and super like willing to obviously do whatever I can to make it. When you play yourself, uh, you know, you, you've done festivals, Forbi uh, Forbidden Fruit Festival you've done, um, Malahide you'll be doing, <laughs> I wish sure of that. Um, do you get nervous at those, are those gigs or smaller gigs? Is there a varying scale of nervousness or, or is it, are you just kind of once you're up there it's... I'm, I'm in control. I've always said it would be easier to perform in front of like 3,000 people rather than just three people. Uh -huh. Because like, I can look in your eyes now and if I'm singing, I'd be like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. There's like hundreds of you, I'm not gonna be, you know? So it's, it's, it's a lot easier to do it that way. But like, it's such, it's so, so, like when you get up there, everything just like, it's like the nerves fall out of your body. Like you can just feel them like rush away and you're like, yes, yes, yes. And it just becomes so fun like, and you just. So your uh, debut single Mood came out in 2019. That's the one you wrote here in the UK, in London. Yes. Um, Honey Honey is the latest one, which is on your uh, debut EP, Beginner's Luck, mm -hmm. which you actually put out on Friday the 13th. Yes. I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. Worth mentioning that we actually launched the Courtyard Studios on the same day as you launched your EP. Yes. Um, 13th of May, Friday. We had exactly the same thought about the Friday the 13th thing. We'll uh, you know. celebrate together now. Well, exactly, yeah. Next, <laughs> next year we'll, we'll do a big thing. Yeah. Um, you've been on the front cover of the Culture Magazine Sunday Times just this week. Yes. That's was, quite a big deal, isn't it? It was mad. I was actually, I work in a cafe in my life, like on the weekends or whatever, and I was there. My dad came in and I was like, oh, did you get the Sunday Times? Can I see? And he's like, you're on the cover. I was like, excuse me? I was like, what? And I, it's me, like, I'm on the cover. That's my face. And uh, it was mad. I was showing everyone I work with and they're like, oh my God, well done. But honey Honey's out now. Yes. Um, that's available to... To, to buy, presumably, mm -hmm. and that's on the um, Spotify, etc. You yes. can listen to it on there. Indeed. Um, music video for that's great. Thank Who's you. doing the production and all those artistic choices? Is that working with Lauren and? Um, I don't like Lauren and Grania are really like my other manager Grania are really helpful with some of the creative ideas sometimes because I can draw a blank with those stuff a lot, and they send in videos. And I'm like, wow, that's. I don't know where you found that, but that's like really good. <laughs> that looks great. Yeah. Doing that. Um, so yeah, like they're, they're super helpful with that because I can be quite ditzy with that stuff, or I'd pick something weird, and they'd have to be like, "That's a bit weird. You can't do that." I'm like, okay. Yeah. And can we buy the EP? Is that available yes, as well? The EP is available um, everywhere, anywhere you want, anywhere you heart size, except in physical form, which is a problem. We need to do that ASAP. That, and we'll look forward to having a, a pristine uh, a gold vinyl uh, oh on the wall of our yes. office upstairs when you send it over. <laughs> um, look, thanks for coming in, Sophie. Uh, so best much. of luck with everything coming, with all the festivals. Um, thank you so much for the session you played today, thank and um, we hope to see you soon. Definitely. For our next artist, Adia Victoria, a powerhouse of a musician whose soul and sensitivity is rarely matched. She's performed at the Courtyard, a 90-minute set, just two days ahead of her support slot for the Rolling Stones and others at Hyde Park's BST. It was an amazing and rare opportunity to treat the fans to songs from her discography, both old and new, at her gig at the Courtyard. Adia's pushed and developed her unique no-bars approach to music and storytelling that creates narrative and emotive feelings. 
Here is a dear Victoria with a performance of Magnolia Blues. For those of you who can get to our venue in London, in September, we have a new festival, Made Me Like It. Then in October, for fans of Adia Victoria and Cat Burns, Brooke Combe performs a sellout show. To join the wait list for tickets, use the Dice app to join the queue. For theatre fans through September and October, we have A Quality of Mercy, which highlights the criminal investigation into one of Britain's most notorious serial killers. An award-winning play comes to us in November, Underdogs, co-written by the author of The Shark is Broken, a West End hit, comes to us in November. It's a hilarious tale of courage and media manipulation about a pub that tries a little too hard to put themselves on the map. Check out our social media and our website. Join us for those shows. Tickets are also available through the Dice app. Thank you for watching this episode of the magazine show with us. We've really enjoyed making it. Uh, to say thank you to the fans, the viewers, the subscribers, and obviously the artists. Uh, you all allow us to carry on doing what we're doing here at the Courtyard Studios and continue to bring you exciting music to be viewed anywhere in the world. And massively, we want to thank all the crew of the Courtyard Studios who helps us put on this production and put on all the hard work for all the music that we love. Um, so we'd just like to say thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.